do, let's jump straight into today's lesson. So let me bring up these notes for you. Travel English at the airport. First, let's look at the top five UK airports. If you're traveling into the UK, you're very likely to go through one of these airports. So I'm going to help you now with the pronunciation of these airports. So the first one here is London Heathrow. Heathrow. We have that TH there. So remember with THs, we put our tongue between our teeth. Heathrow. So London Heathrow. And my phone is ringing. Let me just put my computer on silent. There we go. The next airport that we have here on the list is London Gatwick. London Gatwick. Now, I don't pronounce the T and I don't think many natives do pronounce the T. So London Gatwick is the, the best way to pronounce this airport, London Gatwick. So we have Heathrow, Gatwick, and then we have, outside of London, Manchester Airport, Manchester, Manchester. Make sure that CH is more explosive, ch, Manchester, Manchester. Good. The next one on the list is London Stansted, 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 London Stansted. Okay, and let me just bring up the last one there is London Luton or Luton. So you can either um, glottalize it, Luton, or pronounce it with a strong plosive, Luton, Luton. Now you can just say these airports without saying London in, in the front end. So you can say, I'm traveling from Heathrow or I'm flying from Gatwick, Stansted, Luton. Everyone will know pretty much where you're talking about. Um, but if you want to give it the full title, then you say London Heathrow, London Gatwick, London Stansted or London Luton. So lots of you are commenting now. It's lovely to see you all. Um, my voice is a little bit hoarse. I hope that it will um, hold out throughout the lesson. Um, but what I want to know now, now we've covered these top five UK airports, is have you ever flown into the UK? If so, which airport did you fly into? Or um, are you planning to visit the UK this year? And if not, are you planning to visit any U um, English speaking countries at all? It would be good to know. So please do comment and let me know what your travel plans are for this year. And on the subject of travel plans, later this year, I am hoping to visit um, Germany. It's a country that I don't know very much about. I have only been there for one afternoon in my lifetime when I was working on the cruise ships. I docked there for a, an afternoon. But I have wanted so dearly to go and explore Germany. So in August or September, I do plan to head over there and spend some time figuring things out and meeting people and, and just seeing what the country has to offer. Now, unfortunately, I don't really know any German. I know how to say hello. Um, I know how to say please, those very basic words, but I don't really know how to string a sentence together or to ask for a cup of tea, for example, um, or to ask directions or anything like that. So I decided that I'm going to learn German this year and I'm going to do it with the help of today's sponsors Lingoda. Now you may or may not know Lingoda are running another marathon. Now this is their fifth marathon. Previously I think over 10,000 people have been involved in the last four marathons and lots of them have completed the marathon and skyrocketed their language skills. And I've said all along, I want to do it, I want to do it, but I never have actually got involved. And now is the time that I'm going to go and do it. I'm going to learn German on the Lingo de Marathon, which is very exciting because if any of you decide to take part in the German marathon, then you guys could be in the class with me. Now, the class sizes are very small, so there's only usually two or three students in a class. So we could be classmates. That would be fun. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about the marathon in case you are interested because it is a fantastic opportunity. I will also be videoing my experience of the marathon so you get to really see how I progress, how the marathon works in case in the future they do another one 
and you want to see how things go. So I'll be vlogging that for you as well. But the Lingoda Language Marathon, if you're not familiar with it, it's a three month language course, basically. There are two options. You can do a full marathon, which is a, a lesson every day for three months. It's 30 lessons a month for three months. Or you can do the half marathon, which is more for people like me who have a very busy life. I have a little baby, as most, most of you know, and I'm very, very busy. So I will be um, doing the half marathon. The half marathon requires you to take part in 15 lessons a month for three months. Now, the beauty of this is it means that you are immersing yourself in language. You're taking lessons on, on such, in such a... I can't find my words. You're taking regular lessons and that helps you to immerse in the language. You're speaking it, you're reading it, you're writing, you're working with native teachers. So you're getting a, an ear for the accent as well. And so it's really, really helpful, much more productive and effective than say language apps because you're really being pushed and supported through your language learning journey. Now, it's not just German they offer um, the marathon in, of course. They do it in English, business English, which is a very exciting new addition. It was added on the last marathon, I believe. Um, they offer Spanish, French and German, of course. Now, this is a chance for you to dramatically increase your language skills. I'm hoping that by doing the half marathon for three months, it means that I will be able to get around in Germany and do all the basics and, ha and feel confident speaking to the natives um, there is an entry fee of five euros, but if you use the discount code SPEAK3, which is also written down below, and the link in the description box below, then you can get um, free entry with that code. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the biggest perks about the marathon is if you are committed and you turn up to every class and you do one every day for the full marathon, and obviously you're 15 each month for three months on the half marathon, then you're going to get a huge refund. This means you're potentially going to be saving yourself up to 800 euros. So for the full marathon, you'll get a 100% refund if you attend all your classes. It is a big commitment though, so make sure you are, you are committed. Um, if you do the half marathon, you'll get 50% of your course fees back, which is a real bonus. And that's what I'm aiming for. Yay. Okay. So if you are interested and you think that you're going to, um, join, join the marathon, then please do let me know in the comments and maybe I'll see you somewhere along the way. That would be really, really interesting. They're like, Hey, I'm a student. I'm a student too. And I'm your student. Yay. <laughs> Learning together. Okay. So that aside, let's carry on now with, um, Oh, and just before I do finish, on that, make sure you do read all T's and C's before you sign up for anything. That's pretty standard. Um, but just so you know exactly what you're signing up for. Right, let's jump back into this now. So, <clears throat> before you arrive at the airport, <clears throat> when you've booked a flight, there are a number of questions um, that interested people may ask you. For example, they may ask you, where are you departing from? And an example answer to this question would be Heathrow Airport. So we often say departing when talking about airplanes. Departing means leaving. So where are you departing from? I'm departing from London Heathrow. Um, I often depart from Gatwick at the moment. Um, when I've been going skiing, um, going out to Europe, I often take a plane from Gatwick. So I depart from Gatwick. Okay, I've got a message from Sebastian, one of my new VIPs. Hi, Sebastian. You'd say, I'd like to visit the UK. I'm from Argentina. I'm a teacher of English and I hope to be there soon. Well, I hope that you do come and visit. And Argentina, also a beautiful country. I think when I flew to Argentina, I think I went from London Heathrow. I departed from London Heathrow. Lots of you are talking to me in German now as well. <laughs> That's going to be good for me to practice. Thank you, guys. Um, some of you have flown to Gatwick before. Um, I thought Gat Gatwick is pronounced the same as Chiswick. No, it's, I, I see you're thinking there, but no, Gatwick is the pronunciation. Um, Sophia said, I flown to the UK last year. I flew. I flew, to, so uh, past simple, I flew to the UK last year. 
I have flown into, um, I flew, use again, I flew into London Gatwick. Okay. I hope that was helpful. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so um, you don't know how to drop a super chat. If you want to drop a super chat and take um, advantage of that Skype offer, then it's just the little dollar sign. It's just a donation towards the channel. It's the little dollar sign below the comment section. Um, it's not available in all countries, uh, so it may be that you can't see it. Okay, so where are you departing from? Um, let's have a look what else we've got here. You might be asked, which terminal are you flying from? This is particularly important if you are um, going in a taxi to the airport um, or you're taking the train. For example, London Heathrow has a number of terminals. Quite a few, I can't even remember how many, but a number of terminals. And you can take a train or a tube rather to London Heathrow to the different terminals. So you need to know in advance which terminal you're flying from. So you may say, I'm flying from London Heathrow Terminal 1. Or you may say, I'm flying from Gatwick North or Gatwick North Terminal. And that gives people a good idea where to drop you off. <laughs> okay, um, just so you know, the word terminal uh, refers to the building um, at the airport. So the airport building. Obviously, airport encompasses the runways and the whole um, expanse of land owned by the airport. But the airport terminal is specifically the building in which you, you go through to catch your plane. Um, the next question is, which airline are you travelling with? Which airline are you travelling with? An example answer would be British Airways. Uh, I haven't flown with British Airways actually BA oh I have of course I have yes BA I don't say British Airways often we usually shorten it down to BA I'm flying with BA yes <laughs> I've got such baby brain at the moment the other thing you'll need to know is your flight number so a question you'll get is what is your flight number and you'll need to know this in advance because um, when you're looking up the status of your flight for example you'll need to know which number flight it is when you're looking at the departure board and when you go to check in, the first thing you do when you go to the airport, they'll, they'll ask you your flight number, perhaps. Okay, so um, you might also be asked, what is your hold baggage allowance? Now, we don't often actually say hold baggage. We just say baggage allowance. What, what is your baggage allowance or what is the baggage allowance? with your flight, what's the baggage allowance? And they're asking how heavy can your case be? This is often something people ask when um, going skiing because you're taking equipment like skis and heavy ski boots, um, helmets, that kind of thing. And so if you're going in a group, someone in the group might say, what's the baggage allowance or what is our baggage allowance for this flight? And an example answer would be 22 kilograms per person. 22 kilos per person um okay so just to reiterate some of the vocabulary we covered there to book in this scenario in this context to book is to buy a ticket in advance so you book your flight you book your flight we don't often say i i've bought a ticket to we do it's not incorrect but we we more regularly say i've booked a flight to America. I booked a flight to Germany. I haven't yet booked my flights to Germany, but I will. I just need to um, get my marathon underway and then I can book my flights. Um, oh, I didn't cover earlier the, the actual dates for the marathon. Oh, that was very important. So the marathon starts, let me just bring this back up. The marathon starts on the 27th of May. So you've got a little bit of time yet. It starts on the 27th of May and it runs up until August 24th. Now you need to sign up before the 13th of May if you want a place. So the deadline to sign up is the 13th of May. So you've got over a month to get yourself organized if you want to do the marathon. But just a reminder, that's the 27th of May to the 24th of August. So if you're free during that time to get involved, then, then, then do. <laughs> Um, the beauty of it is you can do it anywhere because it's online. So I will likely be traveling during that time, summer, summer holidays. 
um, but I can still get online wherever I am in the world. All right, so um, book. Then we talk about departing. I said before, depart to depart means to leave if you're not familiar with that verb. Then I mentioned the word terminal, a noun that means the departure or arrival building at the airport. And then we have the word hold baggage or lug luggage. You might hear luggage, but we say baggage more often. Um, hold baggage is the luggage which is checked in, so it's registered and packed into the hold of the plane. So into the boot or the back of the plane where all the luggage gets put. It's called the hold. So you give it in when you first get to the airport and then you don't see it again until you arrive at the other side. That's the hold baggage. Okay, all right, let's move on. Upon arrival at the airport, the first thing you'll need to do when you arrive at the airport is to locate your airline check-in desk. So you need to find, locate means to find. You find your airline check-in desk. So you know you're flying with BA, you look for that check-in desk. You'll need your passport, your flight ticket, or if you're booked online, your booking confirmation. And you check in, so this can be used as a verb as well, or a phrasal verb rather. You check in at the check-in desk. So there it's a noun, the check-in desk. Here you will also check in your hold luggage. Sometimes this is called checked luggage. I think that's more American. Um, and you'll be asked to place your luggage on the scales because they need to weigh it to make sure you're not over your limits, your allowance. Um, the scales may also be the conveyor belt, which takes the luggage off into, um, into the system to get put onto the plane. Okay, your hand luggage is different. It's different to your hold luggage. It's what you keep on you, your handbag or your rucksack. Your hand luggage remains with you. That means it stays with you during the flight. You may be asked if you would prefer an aisle seat or a window seat. An aisle seat, I always think that word is spelt different to how you would expect it to be spelled considering the pronunciation. So aisle, aisle. Um, the aisle seat, the aisle obviously is the walkway in the middle of the plane in between the seats. So you might want to be on the aisle or you might be want to be at the window. I am a window seat person. I love being by the window. Um, okay, so another thing you might be um, talking about at the check-in desk is um, if you're traveling with friends, you may ask, are we sitting together? Because although you check in together, they don't always sit you together, which I think is a little bit weird. Um, recently, I went to Austria with my baby, Jacob, and my partner, and the three of us obviously went to the check-in desk together and we signed in they could see we had a little baby and they didn't sit us together they sat us really far apart on the plane which was very odd we had a little baby it's very difficult to manage a baby by yourself in that situation um, and so we had to ask later on if they could do something to sit us together move us around and they did thankfully um, but yes you may ask at the check-in desk are we sitting together could you sit us together all right, moving on. Um, unfortunately, flights... Oh, there's a typo there. That needs an S on it. Flights can be subject to delays and cancellations. If this is the case, then you will be informed at this point that your flight is delayed or your flight has been cancelled. So just to go over, locate means to find. Check-in means to arrive and register. You check into a hotel. You check in at the airport. Remain means to stay and to be subject to something means you're going to be affected by something. So it could be affected by. So flights could be affected by delays or cancellations. Okay, um, just let me say a very quick hello to um, Nitin. Hi, how are you? Um, and my other patrons, if you are watching, I know this isn't the ideal time for most of you. Um, to have a lesson but if you are watching hi and feel free to put your comments here in the Skype um, the patron Skype room all right let's move on um, is it raining there outside says Pitt Tower yes um, it has been raining um, but the Sun seems to be coming through now which is lovely 
Okay, so once you've checked in, then you are going to receive your boarding pass. It's just a slip of paper, your boarding pass, and this has all your flight details on it. So your boarding pass, uh, pass, sorry, that's my northern accent coming out. Your boarding pass, not pass. You may be told your gate number, which is very important because that it tells you where you need to go to get your plane. So you, you may be told your gate number um, or you may have to keep your eye on the departure board, which are those big boards that have all the, all the flight details and all the flight statuses on. And to find out your gate number and to find out the status of your flight. When your plane is ready, it will say boarding next to the flight number and destination. So just so you know, you board a plane. You board a plane as the same as you you might board a bus, perhaps, to get on board, to board. Um, okay, carrying on. Um, you must go through security to enter the departure lounge. So that's the area, the really nice area with all the um, restaurants and lots of shops trying to sell you things for your holiday and you usually have um, electrical shops and things as well for you to get your last minute bits and bobs. Oh, I like that phrase, bits and bobs. It means little, little things um, like toothpaste and uh, maybe a travel plug, for example. Uh, lots of you saying hello, hi, I am seeing those comments. Um, thank you for commenting. And, uh, and yeah, it's lovely to see you all here. Oh, we have 200 of you in. That's lovely. Hi. Okay. So like I said, you must go through security. Now, um, you will be uh, often asked to remove your belt, your jacket, hat, shoes. Um, you will be asked to empty your pockets and to place your items into a tray on a conveyor belt, which passes through an x-ray machine. Okay. Now, obviously in the new rules, liquids in small amounts must be placed into a clear plastic bag. Liquids over 100 ml must be discarded. Discarded means thrown away, got rid of. Forbidden items, forbidden means not allowed. Forbidden items found will be confiscated. And to confiscate means to take something away. So they will confiscate it and you won't get it back. I've had a number of things confiscated, silly things um, that I've accidentally had in my, like I once had a knife. I, I, was, I had a picnic in my bag and I, I'd put in a knife to cut up pieces of apple and things like that. I hadn't even thought about um, going on the plane and, uh, and I should have put it in my main luggage, but I had it in my handbag and uh, of course... Of course they took a knife off me, that um, <laughs> makes sense. But it was a very silly thing for me to do. Um, and when you go skiing, you have an avalanche pack, which has a has an ex um, a thing that makes your, I don't know what it's called, you have like a, a gas um, canister that helps your avalanche safety device to open. And uh, sometimes they're a bit funny about that as well. Anyway. Right, let's carry on. So, um, just going over that vocabulary in case it's new to you. Um, oh yes, here, you'll walk through a scanner or a metal detector, of course. So the vocabulary covered a boarding pass, your noun, which is a ticket or a pass for, for boarding the plane, so you'll need that. Um, the gate, it's also a noun, it's the point at which you leave the airport terminal and enter the plane. Boarding, it's a verb, it means to get on. So you board a plane, a train, your destination, a noun, it means the place you are traveling to. Okay, a conveyor belt, which is a continuous moving band of fabric, rubber or metal used for transporting objects from one place or another. You have conveyor belts in factories, but you also have them in airports. Discard means to get rid of something, forbidden, it's an adjective that means it's not allowed. It's a forbidden object, a forbidden item. To confiscate means to take something away as punishment. To take something away as punishment. Okay, so just to wrap up here now, additional helpful words and phrases. Lots of people are interested in duty-free at the airport. Duty-free are, um, it refers to goods that are exempt from tax. So it usually means cheaper 
item so you can get cheap perfume or um, some people are more interested in cheap alcohol um, it used to be that people would buy cheap cigarettes obviously that's not so fashionable anymore um, you can buy all sorts of things at duty free chocolates and sweets and things like that all a lot cheaper than what you would buy it in a normal high street because it doesn't have um, a tax or a duty to pay on it um, you might also be interested in knowing about the lost and found. If you lose something while you're traveling and you think you lost it at the airport, then you might have to visit the lost and found area, the place where lost items are kept and stored. Um, you may um, need to know or tell someone whether you're on a direct flight or whether you have to take a transfer. So a direct, a direct flight is a flight that goes straight from one place to the next without any stopping um, or... If you have to get a connecting flight, if you have to get two or three flights to your destination, usually if you're traveling a long way, um, then you'll have to get a transfer. So when I went to Argentina, I had to do a number of transfers because obviously Argentina is a huge place. And so we flew into one part and then took an internal flight to our destination. Um, aerosols. You'll see this word a lot in airports. Aerosols are pressurized spray cans like deodorants or hairsprays. Um, the word prohibited means not allowed or forbidden. People will talk about your electronic devices a lot in airports. These are things like mobile phones, iPads, laptops. Often at the security point, you have to take those items out of your bag and display them clearly. Um, you're also told often to keep your personal items with you. Make sure you keep your personal items with you. This means do not leave your belongings anywhere unattended. Um, often people will say, have a good flight. And that is the salutation that you give to someone who is about to fly somewhere. So often the, um, the people who pass you through the gate might say, have a good flight or the um, cabin crew as you board might say, have a good flight, have a good flight. Um, you might hear the word runway. The runway is the road that the plane, plane travels along in order to leave the ground, to take off or to come back down the runway. Uh, you may hear the pilot talking about being taxied. Um, this is to, to taxi a plane is, is basically um, a vehicle that pulls the plane into position when the plane is going very slowly. It pulls the plane into position, so it's taxied into position. And you'll hear about the plane taking off. I just mentioned it's where the plane leaves the ground. It takes off and the plane lands. That's when the plane touches back down. Let me lift this up for you. Um, it touches back down, it lands. It's when the plane reconnects with the ground on purpose. Obviously, if a plane connects with the ground and it's not on purpose, then that's called a crash, which hopefully will never happen to any of you. Um, okay, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That covers, and literally perfectly on time, perfectly on time, I said 30 minutes for this lesson. I do hope you found that helpful. Please do comment below and let me know whether or not you found it helpful, um, what, what was new to you, what wasn't. Let's have a discussion. I will be replying to comments um, over the next few hours. Thank you all for joining me. Don't forget about that fantastic offer with Lingoda. You've got until the 13th of May to sign up. Um, I will be doing the German half marathon. If any of you are interested in German, then maybe I'll see you guys in class. Otherwise, don't forget to use the discount code for any of the courses you're signing up for so that you get that free entry, free registration. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been lovely. Oh, and if you are signing up, do use the link below. So Lingo did knows it's come from me. That would be wonderful. Um, otherwise, guys, take care. Lots of love from London. It's been wonderful being back. I will be live again in a couple of weeks, but I'll let you know via Facebook, Instagram, and here on YouTube when exactly that will be. Okay. Give this video a big thumbs up. I'll see you all soon.